Breaking Bridget. <laughs> this is a rant not about something that happened in the news, but about something that happened to me personally this past weekend when I was traveling to go home for a funeral. The airlines are out of control, and I think we all know this. They abuse us. We are in a hostile relationship with them. And it's so funny because I'll get on the plane and I'm still baffled by the miracle of flying. It is still like, holy crap, how did we figure out how to do this? As Louis C.K. said, you're like a god. You're, you're sitting in a chair in the sky. It is still a wonder to me. The wonder has been dulled, however, by the airlines cramming everybody in like sardines and just treating us like, I don't even know. I think cattle actually get better treatment than humans do in regards to the airlines because they can just do whatever they want with you. This is inhumane. Shut up, sir. For some reason, my flight was delayed. It was a Delta flight. At Delta, we love us some flying, and it be shown like a motherfucker. Because the they couldn't get the bags on the plane because there was they're like, oh, we'll get the door unblocked. I don't really understand what was going on. Something was blocking the door. This was a 6 a.m. flight. I thought for sure, other than mechanical or weather, what could possibly go wrong? Well, apparently something was blocking the ability for them to load bags onto the plane. So then they're like loading all the bags and I had a connecting flight. And instead of connecting me to the next direct flight, which they had seats available that they were still selling, they had me flying to three other airports because I'm a pleb in middle in a middle seat and coach. If I was in first class, I'm sure they would have just put me on that next direct flight. But because I'm just a lowly pleb, they see my time as invaluable and they it's cheaper for them. I get it. I don't need you to explain to me how capitalism, crony, capitalism subsidized by the government it works in the comments. I know that they can sell that flight for $600 and it's cheaper to fly my poor ass around to Columbus, Ohio and Atlanta before I get back to Austin. But it's still insane because I originally purchased a direct flight from from Minneapolis to Austin with my connection and they should just give you the next flight that is comparable especially if there are seats available but no they don't do that they can squeeze out a buck so they make me fly around so thanks to the miracle of wi-fi on airplanes I booked a flight on my other least favorite airline that me over last time when I was flying Southwest. And in this case, they became my savior. This is the thing about airlines. One week they can be your nemesis and the next week they can be your savior. And was booking a flight midair and just canceled my other flight with Delta. And now I'm fighting to try and get my money back. And it was a shit show because I'm looking around and I was coming home from a funeral. I felt like the mom in home alone. I was like, I need to get home to my daughter. I will do anything. I will trade at this necklace I got from an Instagram ad <laughs> just so you can please give me some way to get home to my daughter. My boobs are going to explode. I'm still breastfeeding. And they don't give a shit. No one gives a shit. Here's what I did realize. Folks, we are all one. Okay? I like to talk to people on the airplanes. Yes, I'm one of those people. Don't worry. I can take a hint if you don't want to talk. But I do like to chat with my neighbors, especially when I'm in the middle seat, which is always. And I learned a lot about my fellow Americans traveling, sardines, plebs, just sweating it out in the airports. And everybody had different politics. We all chatted. It was very civil. And here's the thing, folks. We are more alike than all those people who are hundred millionaires trying to tell us that we're not. We're all sitting in coach together, <laughs> fighting with each other. The nerve of these private jet motherfuckers dividing us. That's really the big takeaway for me. Aside from how the airlines can treat us all like garbage, we are all being treated like garbage together. Can't you see it, people? We are all the same. You're all individuals. Yes, we're all individuals. They're dividing us with this stupid culture war shit. 
when we're all being treated like crap, the airline seats are getting smaller. We used to get meals. And now we get freaking sun traps. <laughs> sun traps. And we're all the same, folks. The same lady who sat next to me and said J.K. Rowling was a crazy person who was on her way back to Berkeley. I know you're shocked. And the same guy who was talking about how much he loved Trump. We're all sharing sun chips. <laughs> and coach, motherfucker. Can we unite on some things so that we can actually fix some of the problems in this country? Because the stories that I heard from people were about the health care stuff of their loved ones and the bullshit way they're treated by corporations and how they're getting gouged every time they turn around and nothing would make all of these politicians who are in the pockets of these very corporations happier than to have us sitting on a plane fighting about Barbie and masks. <laughs> and that is my rant. Well said. <laughs> here, here. We're all eating sun chips. <laughs> sun chips. So juicy. <laughs> That's my theory. Real America is the middle seat and coach. And any politician that was would dare to fly fucking domestic or coach would probably win every single state. Yeah, right. Yeah, just go hang out in the Atlanta airport with the plebs for for a five hour layover and talk to the people. You'd be like, go viral, the earned media, sit and coach with the rest of us, and you will have my vote. Whoever sits and coach has my fucking vote. You don't have to do it every flight. Just do it two or three times. Just so you can see. So you can remember what it's like to eat sun chips. 